Okay, so we're back from our flight test and the Tiny Hawk 3 HD0 did a pretty amazing job. I'm pretty glad to have this in my fleet, guys. Pretty surprised by how well this thing flew. Now, if you're unaware of this drone, this is the Tiny Hawk 3 HD0, and this is not for sale in the market at the time of filming because this was actually a custom build of mine. Now, maybe eventually Emacs will build one of these as a bind and fly, or in an RTF kit, and that may happen in the future. I don't know. But if you're interested in building one of these for yourself, I've done a full video on this, and I'll leave it linked down below so you can take a look at it. Now let's talk about the flight characteristics of this small little drone. We'll find this thing indoors, especially in angle mode. It's very smooth and docile. I can shoot a lot of gaps, and that's the reason why I chose this frame in the first place. It had really good characteristics when flying indoors. Now outdoors is also pretty decent as well. I can put this into acro mode, and this thing is very peppy especially in the upper end of the throttle. Now the flight controller here is flash for Beta Flight 4.3 on here, and I initially started off with the Meteor 75 tune on here, or CLI. So pretty much everything from that was on here. It flew okay, but I wasn't 100% satisfied with that. So I did go into Beta Flight, go in the pre and use the UAV Tech pre for their tiny whoops. Now his tune is pretty decent, that's what I'm using currently, and that seemed to work pretty well with this setup. Now as I got more stick time on this drone, I began to fly a little bit more aggressively, trying to do some simple acro maneuvers, and this drone isn't the best for that. Now I can do some nice rolls on here, looks pretty good, but when I start doing some power loops on the bottom end, it tends to wash out and then just tumble and sometimes crash if I don't have enough altitude. So probably not the best drone for acro maneuvers, and I'm sure that's kind of typical of these small tiny loops, especially with all these propeller ducks on here. Now for visual, this drone did a really amazing job, and probably the reason why you're watching this build in the first place. Now I initially had the canopy on here, the one for the Tiny Hawk 3, I have it in my hand right here. And as you saw in my last video, you could see a halo around the camera. And that's because this tiny camera here is so small, this canopy here was not designed for it, so it's a little bit recessed back, and you can see the circular or the circle in this canopy. So I decided to just mount the camera straight to the actual top frame or on the top piece of the canopy here. And that's the option other pilots use as well, so that's nothing new or unique on here. I was trying to avoid that only because I wanted this to look like a stock OEM or factory Tiny Hawk 3. So I might just alter eventually and put it back on here so it looks like a factory product. You also have other options like the Mobula 6 HD0 canopy, and that one would work actually pretty fine. It's also very light, and this should support this small camera on here. Now as far as the HD0 system on here, this is not my first time using HD0, but this small whoop light board and camera is amazing, guys. It's very, very light, and the image quality coming from this is amazing, guys. Now this is a full-fledged camera. You can change the color saturation, even change the aspect ratio on here, and I did do that a few times when I was flying and testing this out. So that works pretty good. If you're comfortable flying 4x3, you have that option. Um, I personally like 16x9, and I also have that option as well. I can change that straight from the goggles. Pretty, pretty cool. Now as far as reception from the VTX, it did pretty well. For a 200 milliwatt VTX, this did pretty, pretty well. I was actually getting better than usual signal on here um, with my typical goggle setup. But yeah, I was really impressed with this. I flew this numerous times with two different goggles and they both generated really good performance. Now I do plan to update or upgrade my antenna here in the future. This linear antenna here did okay, but I'm sure I can get even further range um, with a more directional or more premium antenna. And that's what I plan to do here in the near future. Now talking about VTX, you saw in my install build, I did damage one of the RX pad on my flight controller. And okay, big deal. I was kind of scared that I wouldn't get telemetry, but I do have telemetry in my goggles and in my DVR, really, really good. And that's because I did still have the TX pad on here and I can send information from the flight controller to the VTX and that can broadcast to my goggles. Now the problem is now, if I want to change any camera settings on here, it's pretty hard. Um, I can change the aspect ratio in the actual goggles, but as far as like changing the color and saturation, because I don't have that pad connected, then I really can't do that. I even tried the HD0 stick commands and nothing. So um, that's one thing, that's my mistake, but those features should work in your drone if you, did, if you did connect it correctly and if you didn't do any damage to your pads. Okay, so we talked about the range on this pertaining to the VTX and the visuals. Let's talk about the range on the RX. The RX, obviously I have an Express LRS receiver in here. It is SPI based. Now the flight controller that I use on here is a beta FPV flight controller on here. Now there's a newer version of that flight controller available with a UART based receiver on there. 
Regardless of the situation, this is Express LRS, and uh, this thing has really decent range. So yeah, Express LRS is really the way to go, and if you're gonna do a build for yourself, particularly a 1S build, I would highly recommend Express LRS since it's so light, yet very powerful. Okay, so let's talk about the battery life on this drone here. Now, it did a pretty decent job. Not too great, not too bad, pretty okay. Now, I'm using a 450 milliamp hour BT 2.0 battery on here, 1S obviously, and it worked pretty well. Now, in my average flying, I got between three to three and a half minutes of flying, and my more aggressive flying was around two and a half to two minutes, 45, maybe three minutes of flying with aggressive flying. So. I wish I could get a little bit more flight times out of that. Now I know some of these smaller drones like the Mobula 6 Analog would get pretty decent flight times. This is obviously a heavier drone uh, with some more power hungry components like the HD Zero camera on here, Express LRS. So I don't expect those kind of flight times, but I'd be a little bit happier if I can get around four minutes. Nonetheless, the BT 2.0 connector is pretty good. Um, that reduces battery sag. And throughout all my testing, never once did I experience any battery sag at all. That was a concern of mine because I do have the VTX connected straight to the battery leads. And if you sag too hard with full throttle, then you could lose visuals and then, yeah, crash your drone. So never once did I get it low enough to have the VTX cut out. But my understanding is with this, uh, whoop light VTX, it kind of lose you kind of lose visual around the 2.8 volt region, but I never got it around that low. Okay, so over what do I think about the Tiny Hawk 3 HD Zero? I think this thing is amazing, guys. I'm so happy to have this in my fleet, especially now in the winter months where it's whoop season. It's to the point now where I actually purchased some gates to fly this thing around the house. I'm so excited about flying this thing. The visuals are so good. It's it's pretty cool, pretty fun, guys. Um, so if you're interested in building one of these for yourself, I'll leave all the parts listed down below as well as the videos how to assemble and build this and things to consider when assembling this kind of drone. Now, as I said before, I do think that Emacs might be building one of these in the future. I mean, it's, it kind of does make sense. A lot of people are going to HD zero. You have a 1S capability, why not do it? With a pretty good frame, this would be the perfect drone for a bind and fly and maybe an RTF kit. So um, maybe that's that might come in the future. Um, um, so let me know what you think about this concept, the HD Zero Tiny Hub 3. This is something you're interested in. Leave those comments down below. Maybe Emacs can see those comments as well and have a better gauge for the interest in this drone. Now, if you're looking for a goggle to complement this drone here, I've done one here recently on the Transporter 2 HD. This is a new goggles here by Emacs. Perfect for flying, it's very affordable and it also converts into a monitor as well. I've done a full review on this one and I'll leave it linked right here so you can see. So thanks again for watching and I will see you in the next video. Peace!